Everything you've heard about the KISS years and the KISS stage shows and the spectacle is true. It's not a legend. We're going to show every new band how the big boys do it. Hey, everyone. Rob here from Right Between the Eyes podcast. And um, the only one here is Nick and Nico uh, are not on this particular video because I decided to do a quick unboxing. Not because I decided I'm going to do an unboxing. You guys stay at home. Uh, this had arrived to me. I don't think they have gotten their physical copy yet. Um, I'll have to find out for them if they do. Maybe they'll record a video, send it to me, and I'll put it up here. Regardless, I'm pretty sure that they had also got the colored vinyl of, of course, if you know what today is, is the release day of Kiss Off the Soundboard, 1977, Des Moines, Iowa. So this is a big one, and I know there's a particular song on here that Nico has been dying to have official recording of live other than, you know, a live or whatever. But as far as the bootleg series is concerned, this makes four now. Yes, four in the series. I had to look at the uh, vinyl collection over here. So we've had Tokyo 2001. We've had 2004 Rock the Nation, Virginia Beach. We've had 1996 uh, Donington Festival of the reunion tour. And now... And OG Kiss, 1977, Des Moines, Iowa. So this has been a really great series. And this year is the third in the release. We had Virginia Beach, then Donington, and now uh, Des Moines. So I'm going to do a quick opening here. And in the, the version that I bought, I got the colored vinyl. So this should be the purple vinyl. We'll see. Uh, it came from Kiss Online exclusive. So you can see how it's packaged here. So we'll see, hopefully everything is nice and pristine and there's no dings and dents. And I also always get the trading cards. And I'll show you what I've done with them. I'm just going to pull out. Here is the 2011 um, Tokyo. Sorry, I'm losing my track <laughs> train of thought here. So I get the trading cards with every one of the releases. And what this is... This is a baseball card sheet that you, back in the day, if you collected baseball cards and movie cards or even kiss cards back in the day, to put uh, your trading cards in. So I very carefully along the seam, not like on the seam so it doesn't split the holder, is that I put the cards. So depending on how the logo is set, so there was a lot of negative space off to this side is where I decided to put the cards to kind of show them off, I was initially going to put them inside of the record and treat it like a, you know, 70s, you know, bonus, like a poster or something like that. But slipping them downside in the protective sleeve in the bag gives the album artwork or people like, it's just a boring cardboard. I was kind of spruced it up a little bit. So you can go to any, um, you know, Walmart for people that are still playing or collecting Magic the Gathering cards. They just have, you know, sheet card protector sheets, and that's what I bought. So for a lot of different KISS cards or even other cards that I have, even action figure cards for some of us that collect action figures or, you know, some Batman cards that I had, I would put those cards in here to kind of keep them. So I thought this was a cool way to also protect the cards and to give the artwork a little bit. Of, so I've done that with everyone so far. And plus I thought the cards were kind of cool to be able to have for the album. So we'll do an unboxing here. Now, we are supposed to be recording, well, we were going to record Sunday. Nico's in the middle of a move, so we've kind of backed that up tentatively. At, we might do it Sunday, just depending if his move goes well. So we are definitely going to be doing the Des Moines album, but due to next week is my wife and I's anniversary. It's also Nick's, and he and his wife's anniversary we're going to want to have a chance to listen to this and kind of dissect it before we do a review. So it could be a little bit past when this comes out because we do have another album review coming up that we're going to do. So the cards just came up, trying to not bend them. So here's how the cards come. A little bag. And am I a geek and do I keep the cardboard little thing here? Yeah, I end up doing it. So I'm actually, when this is over, I will cut the... I think I may have a, another design, so I'll have to look and see how the album artwork is laid out to depend if I'm going to go three wide at the bottom and one single or, you know, each one of the records I have is a little different. So here's the Gene card. 
And the Paul Stanley card. That's really cool. Nico is pointing right at you saying, I stole your love. Oh, Peter's is cool. Peter's is really cool. I love the red. And Ace is really cool, too. And then all it does, the back of the card just makes the artwork on the front sleeve. So I don't much, you know, care about the back side of the card. So that'll look nice framed around. So the cardboard mailer, this is actually sealed on there quite well. For anybody that, you know, wants to know or... So I have not bought the CD. I'm going to double dip in this like I have all of them. I actually have not gotten the CD version of Donington yet. When it comes to the vinyl, I've been wanting to get the exclusive, and then I'll, you know, go to a local store and pick up the actual CD. So here it is. So this is a two. Is it a two vinyl? Yeah, it's two vinyl. So this is the thinnest of them. So there's Des Moines. So I can kind of see already I'll probably do it. On this side again, we'll probably three going this way. I could do three long and one at the top, but anyway. So there's the hype sticker. Everybody wants to see it if I can do this right here. It's backwards, Rob. So I don't know if you saw on mine. Some people will leave it in the protective sleeve or the actual plastic that it came in. I don't. I very carefully peel them off, and then I put it on my protective sleeve here so that's that's how i do it that's what i'm going to continue to do to all my hype stickers so we'll take a look at this together talk amongst yourself rhode island is neither a road nor an island discuss you know we sorry for the bad joke um i do have a bad dad joke but eh, maybe i'll say it at some point but any <laughs> anyway uh, we've talked on the show that this this off the soundboard series i really wish that they have been doing stuff like this the entire time. Or, you know, once the reunion tour started, I, I kind of see at the reunion tour, like, this is the version of Kiss that we're doing right now. We're only going to be talking and doing this. So the fact that Carnival of Souls came out during the reunion tour, which was kind of odd and, and amazing at the same time, but neither here nor there. I wish that we were getting stuff like this all along the way. But that being said... We have gotten so much content, and I have spent so much money on this band this year that it's it's almost mind blowing. Like, man, I wish I had a thousand dollars that I could have spent on the VIP, you know, meet the band backstage. I probably did over the course of a year. So very cool. But I mean, what a great what a great year to be a Kiss fan as far as music. So I know that the the Brown packaging never really bothered me as much because it's not about the artwork. Yeah, artwork would be kind of cool, but it's to listen to, and that was more of the thing. So here are the individual there's LP2. Veterans Memorial Auditorium, Des Moines, Iowa, November 29th, 1997. So there's the front of the inner sleeve, the back. Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Ace Freely, Peter Chris. So we all know that. The paper sleeve, of course, I'm going to be doing. Uh, this does have a, a decent lined inner sleeve. I don't know if it's like a, a MoFi sleeve or something like that, but it's not just the traditional, oh, this is so <laughs> nice. So this is one of those times where people, like, you can see the purple reflection coming off of my face. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So I know some of the off the sound boards, people are like, oh, it's not the color that you showed on the website. I think this actually is the color purple that if you thought you were going to get, this is actually that bright. The lights aren't doing it justice here with I have. So I don't know if I can put this little tiny ring light I have to kind of show that at all. It's probably not coming out real well. But it is nice, bright, vibrant purple. It's almost probably more in the... That's kind of doing it here in this light. It's almost a violet that has some red hue to it. But the I like the labels. Just the 
down and dirty, looks like it's printed really quick in someone's basement. I cannot wait to listen to this. So I know, I think today they released I Stole Your Love as the next single from, from this. I'll pull out the other one, too. It's obviously pretty much going to be exactly the same. But just in case, if there's any defects, I'm glad that mine arrived in great condition. I literally just got this off the back porch like 10 minutes ago. Set up the camera and was ready to go. So, again. So, there's a lot of dead wax in the middle of it because, you know, they stretched this out over two vinyls. Just on this one. So, this side, I think, only has three songs. Oh, it does have four. Well, with Beth being, you know, two minutes and 29 seconds. So, this is cool. So I'll be very interested to talk to Nick and Nico about this. Like I said, I think we might be recording this Sunday, uh, given that uh, Nico has been moving. We had to kind of move our, our timetable a little bit. I just kind of tore the little sleeve here. You'll have that with the record. But I'm going to re-sleeve it anyway. So uh, an anniversary, but it's celebrating another 35th anniversary. You can probably guess if you do your math for KISS fans what the next one's going to be. If you heard our last episode about a mirror fracturing. If you look at an album cover of Kiss with the mirror it's fracturing, you can kind of see the corner of it over there. So that is going to be our topic coming up. Um, I believe I'm going to guest on In My Head's uh, YouTube channel today. I think we are going to try and record something. So a lot of content for RBTE. Thank you for watching and listening. I've been saying on the last few podcast episodes, audio, and some of our uh, video content that we would like to start doing some video content. I do know that we are going to have a show. We're still working out the idea or the ideas, but um, the Kiss Army Things podcast, we are going to do a show and tell episode of, you know, maybe some of this stuff here. We're working out that idea. So uh, I'm working that out with the Crusoes and uh, Xander is talking with his brother Jeb to kind of formulate what that's going to be. But that'll be a full video episode here on the channel. We'll probably sprinkle more things like this. I believe uh, the Crusoes have control of the podcast, the, the YouTube version of this as well to be able to do stuff as they see fit as well. So that is the unboxing of Des Moines, Iowa. And I believe I think this is the last of the off the soundboard for this year. I think just how they come out quarterly or, you know, wh whatever it is, or three for a year. So we've not heard of the next one, but I think at the time that the Donington one came out, I think they announced it within a week or two that the next off the soundboard is coming out. So I'll be curious as we get into December, maybe even November, and, and, and heck, it could be even later this month, we, where we might hear what 2023 is going to be like as far as uh, KISS audio products. So, again, I always say, and we say on the show, what a great time to be a KISS fan. All the things that we wish KISS was doing, at least giving us content. We've been saying for a long time, like, well, if they're not going to record any new music and whatever Paul has to say about that, that's a discussion for another time at least they're coming out with content and Nico likes to kind of pick and say, we're not going to record any new albums. We're just going to give you the same album that you're going to buy over and over again. Cause Hey, it's this anniversary, this anniversary. So word on the street is I think alive Two might be the next picture disc. And I'm trying to scramble in my brain when alive Two's anniversary, 45th anniversary is, I want to say it's September, so really quick here, I'm going to try and look at this really fast while I still have the camera rolling. I should know this. I have it written down. Kiss Alive 2. There we go. Glad the internet's working fast today. So October 24th is when the album was released. So we've got Creatures of the Night. Of course, that box set was announced. We've been talking about that off and on. We haven't addressed it on the show yet with versions we're getting and all that stuff so we'll probably save that for our next audio episode but we've got creatures of the night crazy nights and 
um, Alive 2 celebrating anniversaries, uh, Crazy Nights of September, wink, and uh, Creatures of the Night and Alive 2 are in uh, October. And actually, the same day that Creatures of the Night was released, 25 years ago, Carnival of Souls was also released in 1997. So Carnival of Souls is actually celebrating an anniversary. Now, do I think that's really low on the list of anniversaries that they could celebrate? Probably, but I don't think anybody saw Greatest Kiss getting an anniversary treatment. So since it celebrated its 25th, you know, maybe Carnival of Souls would get some type of release, but they did do just a German pressing not that long ago, maybe a year or two. So we'll see. Anyway, I'm rambling here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting. And if you like what you see here, click the like button and subscribe. And we will be putting up more content. And I'm even uh, considering putting the audio version on YouTube. And, of course, with all the music and copyright and all that stuff, I'll have to pull a lot of that stuff out with, with those things I put in there. So, But anyway, uh, stay tuned for more stuff. And check us out on anywhere where you get your podcast: uh, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, all that stuff. We are on there. Just look up Right Between the Eyes podcast. So on the behalf of the Caruso's Nick and Nico, I'm Rob, and you've been watching and listening to Right Between the Eyes podcast. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Stay tuned. Bye. Mm-hmm.